Hi friends, I'm Gabby and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. So here we are finally for the most long-awaited video of the year, my favorite books that I read in 2022. I'm gonna have two videos going up. One is gonna be my favorite romance books of 2022. Then in this one, I'm going to talk about all my other favorite books of the year that are not romance essentially horror and thriller once i start talking about these books you're gonna notice a trend in those genres i think i have a couple that do not fall into the genre of either horror or thriller this is essentially going to be like a recommendations video if you stumble upon this video just know that i wholeheartedly recommend every single one of the books i'm going to talk about in this one i'm also not going to go into a lot of detail about the plot of these books i'm more so essentially going to say why it is that said book made it to this list a lot of the books that i'm going to talk about today do have reading vlogs on my channel where i do go more in depth about the plot and my thoughts on these books i'm going to link all relevant reading vlogs either down in the description box or up in the cards i have 14 books on this list and only two of those do not fall into the thriller or horror category so i'm going to go ahead and begin by talking about those books the first one i have on my favorites list is i'm glad my mom died by jeanette mccurdy this is non-fiction it is my favorite non-fiction book of the year possibly the only non-fiction book i read this year i'm not really sure i did listen to this one on audio through libro fm and their alc program this one was really powerful i really enjoyed janet mccurdy's narration it's just one of those books that i am not likely to forget she did have quite a traumatizing childhood and early adolescence just a very complicated relationship with her mom i'm so glad i decided to listen to it because the title was kind of keeping me at bay i know it's sarcasm but i don't know it's just making me unsure whether i was going to listen to this or not especially because i wasn't an iCarly fan growing up i think Jeanette might be a little bit younger than me so when this show came on i wasn't really like the top demographic for it but i was at work i was feeling in the mood to listen to a nonfiction, and i had this one on my libro fm app like i said i'm so glad that i did give it a listen because it made it to my top favorite books of the year another book that i have here that is not horror or thriller is the change by kirsten miller this one is a botm copy that i got in a book of the month exchange on facebook on one of those groups where you can exchange your botm copies for other botm books i don't remember what i exchanged for this one but i'm so glad that i did it says here on the back that this is fantasy and while it does have a lot of fantastical elements as it deals with witches i do feel like this reads a lot like a mystery it kept me on the edge of my seat i was very intrigued wanting to know how this mystery was gonna play out what was going to happen next as you can see it's a bit of a chunker and i'm not comfortable reading books that are over 450 pages this one was 470 pages i did have the audiobook though so that helped me in getting through this this is about three women who are entering their 50s they're entering into like middle age and they're changing in more ways than would be expected i guess they're discovering that they have these abilities these powers these powers come with responsibility and so they're sort of caught in this mystery that they feel is their duty to solve it has such great commentary on women and getting older going through menopause this obsession that society has with youth only focusing on women that are young and sort of discarding women who are like past their prime or whatever this is these women taking the power back taking their lives back and sort of rising up against 
these ideas it was just a very inspiring book i really enjoyed it like i said i loved a lot of the commentary here but i also loved the story and these three characters were very gripping i absolutely loved one of the main characters here her name is harriet she is like my idol now i think i've mentioned this in other videos but i do love reading about witches like any media that's about witches i am ready to consume it this book instantly became one of my favorites it has so many wonderful quotes like i just felt like i wanted to underline a bunch of quotes in this one but since i was mostly doing audiobook i was kind of lazy to just go back to the book and find the page where the quote i liked was overall this is an amazing read so i'm gonna go ahead and leave horror for last and continue on with the thrillers that i read in 2022 that made it to my favorites list so the first one i have here is the family game by katherine studman this i read pretty recently i vlogged about this one for my reading christmasy books vlog i had a good old time with this one i think i don't remember if i gave this four stars or 4.5 i don't remember what i said in that video but it's like a very solid four the only issue i had with this one was the ending i thought was kind of weak like it could have packed more of a punch it's about a woman from london who is about to marry into this very rich american family she is about to meet her fiance's family for the first time and he tells her that his family can be kind of overbearing and they love to play games but it's definitely nothing that she was expecting they do play some serious life threatening games and this family dabbles in secrets like secrets to them are kind of like a currency it was a fun ridiculous over the top read but in thrillers and i think i said this also in my favorites of the year of 2021 that that's what i seek out in thrillers it makes for a really interesting and fast-paced read my next favorite thriller of 2022 is jar of hearts by jennifer hillier jennifer hillier quickly became one of my favorite authors of 2022 i read her newest book and most of her backlist at this point the only one i am pending to read is wonderland which i think i'm gonna read this month in january because it's the pick for gabby's book club the book troupe so i think you know perfect if i read it then i'm done with reading all of jennifer hillier it's been a fun ride reading her first book and her last book all within a couple of months it's quite evident how her writing has changed throughout the years i do have to say that i'm more of a fan of her newest stuff i think that turn really makes itself evident with jar of hearts which i am pretty sure was published in 2018 don't quote me on that i could be wrong the tone of that book is a little bit more serious than her previous stuff with jar of hearts we get the same kind of very dark and intense themes but the tonal shift from jar of hearts onward is evident i think that if you're gonna dive into a jennifer hillier book then it should be jar of hearts because it just has everything but also what i really appreciate from her writing is the fact that she does deal with a bit of heavier themes than most other thriller books i've read so in jar of hearts we have a main character who was accused of being involved in the murder of her best friend back when they were in high school. Throughout the book, we see flashbacks to the time when the main character and her best friend were in high school, how their relationship was. You know, they had one of those relationships where they were kind of frenemies, very intense but also very volatile. We also follow the main character in the present where she is getting out of jail then subsequently getting out of jail sort of disentangling this very complicated web of a mystery the reveal is quite shocking very surprising i don't think i saw it coming up until like the last third of the book and yeah it was very satisfactory jennifer hiller just shot to the top of my auto by authors and one of my new favorites 
in the thriller genre. Another book that I'm actually not sure whether to classify this as a mystery, a thriller, is Confessions by Ganae Minato. I read this back in the summer. There is a reading vlog for this one on my channel. I think it's one where I was trying to read seven books in seven days. It's very fast paced. You can definitely get it read in one day this one has a very unique concept very original i really enjoyed how this book was formatted it read very fast even though it is broken down into only six chapters and each chapter looks at a different pov it's about how the death of one person impacted all of these people we even get to see i think from the person who was the cause for this death i'm not gonna say too much about this one because like i said i do have a reading vlog for this one where i talk really at length about what this one is about but it was very shocking very surprising every chapter ended with a bit of a twist so now we're gonna move on to horror and the next four books i want to talk about are all novellas i do believe i read all of these for different reading vlogs or I have recommended them before. I have a lot of videos on my channel in which I talk more at length about these books. The first one I have here is Gone to See the River Man by Christopher Triana. This one is one of the most intense, I'm not really sure what other word I could use to describe this. It's got such beautiful, beautiful writing, but the subject matter is just really delicate really sensitive so if you do end up reading this then i do definitely suggest that you look up some content warnings even though for this one i'm not sure if you would find many because the content that is hard to read about in this one knowing what that is would be a spoiler i really enjoyed it which is kind of weird to say because this book is so twisted that it's like i enjoyed this book but like i said the writing is so good the story it's very very hard to forget but it was told in such a way that it really like immerses you you know it's like a whole experience it's about a woman who is kind of obsessed with a serial killer who is in prison and she begins communicating with him through letters and then actually goes to visit him at prison he sort of has many admirers and he's kind of pitting them against each other so she tasks this narrator the main character with going into the woods to this abandoned cabin to retrieve a key that she then must take to this mysterious figure called the river man and he kind of leads her to believe that whoever completes this task will be the woman that will be worthy of him and so she actually goes through with this she ends up taking her sister along with her and her sister is dependent on the main character for her needs and so they embark on this dangerous mission all to fulfill the request of this serial killer it is so much more than that it is definitely a book that unravels as you start reading the main character knowing where she comes from her background what her childhood was like it kind of paints a picture of why it is that she would get involved with this serial killer and do the things that she's doing definitely a very very intense book i would still have to say you know very worthy of the five stars i gave it next we have a couple of books that i read for the same reading vlog and that is crossroads by laurel hightower and night of the mannequins by stephen graham jones with crossroads a once again this is a book that deals with very sensitive subject matter on the topic of self-harm and it could be quite triggering to read it but the story and the way it ends it's haunting that is like the perfect word that i can use to describe crossroads just chilling like the i think of the ending of this story and it's chilling then we have night of Ma night of the mannequins by stephen graham jones which i initially wanted to rate four stars but upon Further reflection, I think I'm going to give it 4.5 and round it up to 5 because I cannot get over 
the twist in this book i'm not sure if it's a twist but it's something that i didn't know going into the book and i don't think you should know this going into it because it's a spoiler it could majorly ruin the reading experience i knew what the plot of this was but it had never crossed my mind that the author was gonna take things in the way that he did and i think that's what makes this book so amazing that's all i want to say about those two i'm going to go ahead and link the reading vlog where i read both of those so that you can go check out my full thoughts and the premise of both of these novellas the other horror novella i have here i also read for a reading vlog i was reading lexi's recommendations to see if we have similar reading tastes on this book we do agree because we both really loved it and it's cirque berserk by jessica guest this is book four in the rewind or die series which is available on kindle unlimited or was back when i read this in october october or november i think it was november i had such a good time with this book it's a slasher so you know there's a lot of gory gruesome scenes but it was a lot of fun and i really enjoyed the fact that we get a lot of backstory on these characters what i really found interesting about it is that it's told from the point of view of the people doing the killing so we get to go back in time and see what life was like for them before they began doing this so yeah it was definitely very interesting very fun okay so the next book i have here i think is technically categorized as horror and it is the drowning kind by jennifer mcmahon i read this i want to say back in april and really fell in love with jennifer mcmahon's style of writing all of the books i've read by her do this where we get we follow a storyline in the past and then we follow a storyline in the present and so we get one chapter in the past one chapter in the present and it really weaves a mystery you know that's usually the answer within that mystery lies in the chapters that are told in the past and the characters in the present are sort of unraveling everything and seeing where this all leads i find it a really fun way a really engaging way of telling a story and i yeah it's one thing that i definitely appreciate about jennifer mcmahon's books and in this one we're following two sisters who used to be really close and would spend i think every summer at their grandmother's house her grandmother had a pool that was said to grant wishes it was i guess a magical pool and a lot of people from all over the town would come to bathe in this this pool and so one of the sisters is pulled back into this town into their grandmother's house when the other sister turns up death in the pool and right away the main character thinks this is really weird because her sister was a good swimmer so she sets out to unravel the mystery of this pool where did it come from is it haunted you know what is what exactly is going on with this town and this pool this one put jennifer mcmahon on the map for me now i'm always very excited to read more books by this author because i just love the story she comes up with next i have when the reckoning comes by latanya mcqueen as you can see this one is a short one i read this at the beginning of the year i want to say i read this back in january this one has stayed with me this is a ghost story essentially it incorporates race in class woven also with you know like a very classic ghost story i found it really intriguing really engaging whenever i was thinking of my favorite books for 2022 this one kept popping up in my mind i'm not sure if i rated this 4.5 or four not, not really sure but it just sticks in my mind as one of those books that i read this year or this past year and really loved so this one focuses on a main character named mira and she goes back to her hometown for the wedding of the girl who used to be her best friend when they were growing up and this woman is getting married at a plantation and she is a white woman this just kind of doesn't sit well with mira but she is pulled back to this town that she once fled once she gets there she reconnects with their other childhood best friend named jesse and they are the only 
only to black people at this wedding that is taking place at a plantation where they actually do recreations is that what you call it reenactments of what this place was like back when it was functioning as a plantation which was just creepy as fuck imagine being at a place like that where everyone is looking at this as entertainment it was just like very disturbing there is something at this plantation that is sort of calling to mira wanting her attention and so mira starts to believe that the spirits have come back and are exacting revenge on all of the people at this wedding. It is just a very hunting and disturbing read, but one that you surely will not forget. My next favorite is The Between by Tanana Redu. I read this back in October for Black Aweenathon. I absolutely loved this book. I loved how subdued it was. The horror is not like in your face. It is very quiet. It sort of sneaks up on you. A little by little, we start to dive deeper and deeper into the story of race, of trauma, of family, of the subconscious. There's just so many layers to this story so this one is about a man who is living in florida it is set in the 90s because it was written in the 90s so it's about a family man living in florida and his wife starts getting these threats that are very racially fueled this person whoever it is is threatening the children that this couple has together and at first the main character's wife is like very dismissive trying not to make a big deal out of it but then the notes just keep coming and the threat starts looming over them and the main character feels as the man of the family he really has to protect his family and so while this is going on he is also having like these very vivid weird dreams and also he begins losing like hours of time or you know things would happen that he's sure already happened but then people will tell him no that has never happened sort of like he's having these very creepy deja vu episodes and so he goes back to his therapist and you know sort of trying to figure out what is going on with him the answer to the mystery is just one that i wasn't expecting but i found really really intriguing to read about i am now looking forward to reading a lot more from this author i really love the way that she writes horror the last two books i have on my list i left these for last because i do believe these are my top top favorite books so i have here this thing between us by gus moreno i feel like i've raved and raved about this book ever since i read it back in april there's a reading vlog on my channel for it i body read this with lexi from books with lexi so i'm gonna go ahead and link that vlog this is what i hear described as or classified as cosmic horror it does start out kind of slow and then as the chapters you know as the story progresses it sort of picks up but i didn't mind even the slow chapters it just had me hooked from the very beginning this is about a man named Thiago whose wife Vera or Vera has just died at the beginning of the book and he begins telling the story of how before Vera died a lot of weird things were happening at their apartment and it seemed to all be related to their Alexa which is called Itza in this book and so this follows Thiago as he tries to unravel the mystery of what the heck is going on with this alexa and it just gets creepier and creepier as the story rolls along there's so many beautiful lines in this book like beautiful thoughts that diago shares that as you can see i had to annotate it a gem of a book i am so glad that i picked this up plus it's written by a mexican author which i love i love supporting latinx authors and so definitely i had to put it as one of my top two the other book in my very very top books of the year is cackle by rachel harrison this one also has a reading vlog on my channel if you watch that vlog you're gonna see that 
I wasn't really connecting to this one at the beginning. It took me a long time to read it. Initially, I wanted to rate it four stars when I finished reading it because even though it took me a long time, I ended up feeling really connected to this book. As the months have gone by since I finished reading this, I just feel like I want to rate it five stars now. Like the more I think about it, the more I realize how much I enjoyed this book. This one will also be sort of a controversial in the fact that it's not really horror like it is marketed and branded as horror but it's more of a contemporary book with some horror themes i would definitely pitch it to you as contemporary it's about witches it does have a lot of horror elements but don't go into it expecting full-on horror like with a lot of the books that i talked about here today this is one book that I'm hoping to reread soon. I just feel like I'm gonna love it even more upon reread. The premise of this one is a woman named Annie who was just recently broken up with by her longtime boyfriend moves to a new town where she meets this very enigmatic woman named Sophie who just happens to be a witch and Sophie kind of takes Annie under her wing and shows her how to be happy essentially, how to accept herself and discover the power within her and it's just you know one of those very wise powerful books that just has a lot to say like if you're willing to give it the time so that's gonna be it for my top books of 2022 i hope that you guys enjoyed this list um let me know in the comments down below what was your top three favorite books of the year 2022 feel free to recommend me a horror or thriller book down in the comments below that you have loved that's gonna be it for this video thank you guys so much for hanging out with me down in the description box you can find links to my social media if you want to go and follow me on there here's to another year of amazing reads sending you guys lots of positive vibes and i will see you in the next one bye